All righty, so good evening, everyone, or whatever time zone you're in, <laughs> good day. <laughs> uh, thank you all for being here with us, uh, for joining us on this uh, very special virtual lecture. We are thrilled to be joined today by Maria Carolina on International Women's Day. Uh, I was very fortunate to meet Maria several months ago when she was in Salem conducting research on Tichuba. Uh, Maria is a teacher and a writer. She is the creator of the Encruzilinas. I'm sorry, I'm, I know I pronounced it wrong. <laughs> I did my best. Um, a project for reading and debating texts about blackness, gender, feminism, and militancy. She is a researcher and a doctoral student at EACH USP in the graduate program in social change and political participation in which financed by CAPS, she develops research with black Brazilian women married to Italians. So during her visit to Salem, we had a truly fascinating conversation about one of her areas of focus, uh, which includes the analysis of how narratives produced by black women um, can be used to describe the experiences of black women. And that's a conversation, a discussion she will uh, dive into in a little more depth during this presentation. Uh, so just a couple of housekeeping announcements before we get started. Uh, so I just wanna ask everyone to keep yourselves on mute throughout the presentation, just cause it can be a little bit distracting to our presenter. Uh, we will have time for questions at the end. So just hold on to them um, and you can pop them in the chat or unmute yourselves when we get to the end of the presentation. And if you don't already follow us on social media, please do, that's where you'll learn about our other upcoming events. We're gonna be giving a virtual lecture for Salem Ancestry Days called Learning From Our Mistakes, Researching the Salem Witch Trials. Should be a really interesting event. Uh, and that event will take place on Friday, April 21st, and head over to our website for more information about that. And now without further ado, I'm gonna pass the controls over to our wonderful presenter. I'm gonna make you the host and off we go. Okay, I'm the host now. Can you hear me? Yes, Everybody? and Maria, you might have to okay. let two more people in who just came in. Okay, ah, yes. Uh, I can, I can, I, I have to do this or you do? I think you have to do it because you're the okay, host you. now. Okay, okay, admit, okay, okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> perfect. Uh, <laughs> I'm seeing Jenny, Kay, and then she was, Okay, can you, so thank you so much, Jenny. <laughs> I know, can you, oh, more people, just a minute. Admit all, okay. Okay, perfect. Can we, can we start? Okay, thank you so much. Actually, I want to start with some thanks because I have to thank so much. So first I would like to thank Rachel and Gil for having me. All of my friends, my coven that are here and are listen and will listen, you will watch another opportunity. Ana Rush for review this presentation, Claudia Fusco and Pilar Bu for introducing me to Tituba, Gabriela Venturini, Kaiki Oliveira for so much, much, much love, and everyone that is now watching and will watch later, Maris Condé for bringing us uh, this Taituba and also Tituba herself for making this possible because I know that she made this, it, it's in her hands, she made this possible. So thank you Tituba so much for this. Okay. Uh, hi, Thelma. I'm, I'm seeing my Brazilian friends, so I'm so excited. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm start now. I want to show, um, let me see that you, if you can see my presentation. I think so. Me too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cynthia. <laughs> okay, can you see this? Yes? Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm doing like this. It's better, okay? It's good like this? That's perfect. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> so let's start. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about Tituba Marisconde Escrevivência, which is a term in Portuguese and 
doesn't have a translation and I don't want to translate. And then I will uh, explain later why I don't want to translate this uh, term, this concept, this word, which is escrevivencia. So we are talking about black women and the word as a legacy. So let's see. Rachel has introduced me already. So I'm doing this brief introduction another time. So you can see how it spells encruzilinhas and then follow me, please. So I am a professor writing and a doctoral student at EASH USP <laughs> in social change and political participation. I had this profile, this profile on Instagram, this page, this project, which is called Encruzilinhas. And then we studied there blackness, gender, feminism, and militancy. Uh, I am mother of Tum Tum. I have to, to say this. I am the mother of Tum Tum, daughter of Figenia and Brojo, granddaughter of Zelia, and friend of many. But first, I am friend of G7. <laughs> so I have to thank this person. OK. I don't want to do, to make, to, you know, to have, this isn't a class uh, on the history of witchcraft, because you know this better than me. In fact, Salim knows this better than me, but this is, but it's important uh, to do some uh, considerations first. So I am using these uh, uh, women, who studied witchcraft and also studied uh, narratives produced by women. For, for example, Silvia Federici, which is an Italian teacher who is always talking about this, criti uh, this feminism, uh, feminist criti criticism and also talking about how witchcraft is connected with capitalism and history of the world. So according to her, to Federici, the witch hunt uh, is linked with the uh, transition on the West to capitalism. So it's important to say that because we are looking for this event in this optical of this is something that was made to capitalism arises. It's not to have another uh, inspiration inspiration, another result. This is a problem with the man. <laughs> so let's see. And uh, it's important to say all, also that in extreme and sick times, humanity creates a parallel with the devil. So this is what happened, uh, not only in Salem, but also in Europe, first in Europe, actually. Which hunts in Europe and in the Americas were a pragmatic way to uh, do and justify genocide and slavery. I have to emphasize this word slavery because we are talking about a person that is presented as a black woman. And here in Brazil, we know that the black, the slavery was almost like uh, with hunts in number of uh, deaths. So it's it's very difficult to talk about this, but it's important to talk. Well, back to Salem, you know better than me what happened in Salem, but it's important to, do, to say that the best known narrative was from Arthur Miller, um, that uh, for dramatic purpose present a male focus. So we have this narrative from the witches from Salem that was not the witches from Salem, but the man in Salem. It's a narrative that emphasized just the paper and the whole and the life of the man in of the city of the event. So we have this another uh, researcher. I know you know her, Stace uh, Shift, and she has this book. She put, wrote uh, wrote this book, The Witches. And then she presents a more accurate uh, point of view in terms of what uh, was occur with the uh, women in Salem. So it's nice to see her point of view and how her 
description of the events are in a more female, let's see, point of view. So, okay. And she also argues that uh, there is a clear parallel between the events of Salem and the fairy tales. Why? Because it's, it's possible to see in both narratives, uh, center, you, uh, both narratives are centered on young females. So she's more, I, I don't know, she, she is not so, uh, it's not a so sexist point of view. Well, you know that when does these girls, uh, these three girls who are interviewed in Salem, they reveal three names, first of all, Sarah Good, Sarah Osborne, and Tituba, our uh, carrot, main carrot, our protagonist here. But who was Tituba? According to some sources, because we don't have sources, so many sources on Tituba's life. But according to some sources, Tituba was a slave of the Paris family, originally from Barbados, Barbados, and migrated with her family, actually Paris family, from England to USA. I will um, concentrate my speech, my talk, my words, my research here, because for me, makes much, much sense to think about Tituba as a slave and as a black woman, because, okay, we don't know the truth of her life, but we have this narrative of uh, Maris Condé, and then it's possible to understand her as a black woman. Well, she's accused by any Putin, Putman, and, and the girls, but the girl's reaction to her presence in court was completely different. So she was accru accused, but the reaction when uh, uh, the girls were in court, there was a little bit stranger. It was not like, okay, it's her. So as we know, uh, and I already said, there is a very little information about her other uh, her life, other than the information that we have in uh, in the trials. In fact, you have, not you guys have the trials, the transcription of the the trials. Uh, it's important also to say that her testimonies show that she was a fabulous uh, storyteller. She was very lucid, convincing, and I'm. Oh, I want to reinforce also this because I'm talking about a person that was accused by word and then she survived also by word by saying, okay, I'm a witch. And then she was accused of being a witch and then she was, um, she was able to survive because she accepted this word and then start to talk and to narrate herself as a witch, first of all. And then Maris Condé starts to narrate her as a witch. Uh, and this is amazing. So according to Elaine Breslau, another uh, professor, Tituba's narrative were a form of resistance that struck at the heart of the Puritanism. So it's, it, I'm, I'm saying this, the whole situation here was created by just a word. And then this word solves this problem because so now she's able to tell her history, in fact, in her point of view, so it, it, it's beautiful. Uh, so it's how this witch was born. Uh, they're far from the oppression, but above all, resistance. So she was born a witch, not because she was a witch, but because of the world that she accepted. But who is Maris Condé? As we are talking, Jill, who is Maris Condé? Because Thank God she's 
is still alive. <laughs> so Maris Condé is a winner of the 2018 New Academy Book Award, the alternative uh, prize of Nobel because that year was a problem with Nobel. And then she received this uh, alternative prize. She was looking for inspiration, she told us, this she was looking for inspiration for her next book and then a book from Anne Patrice with a book on Taituba uh, fell off the shelf into Condé's hand and she said oh my god how come I never heard about this uh, this black woman this is so important and then she's so um she's so her history is so similar to my history. So I have to know more about this person. And then she, 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 she says, I have never found a literary link as strong as mine with Tituba. She said that Tituba was with her for a whole year uh, when she was writing the book. And I believe in this because I think it's just like this. <laughs> she was there you know, talking to her and saying, okay, this is not like this, this is like this, okay, this happened like this. I want to, to make this, uh, this description. And uh, I think this the the whole idea of escrevivencia, but I will explain this term again. So uh, Condé also said that there is an identification with the Caribbean oranges because she's also from the Caribbean. Uh, she's from Guadalupe, uh, Condé. And this what I did, I did identification with orality. The writer is, is envious, she says, of the storyteller. So I was so envious of Taituba, of Taituba history. So it's I. I said, I have to tell this history with my own words uh, and with the help of Tituba which, uh, that was with me for this whole year. Um, and also Condé says that the book is a response to Miller's Tituba uh, to give her her own personality, her young and attractive, to make her like a human. Because in Miller's uh, history, in Miller's narrative, Tetuba was just a person. I think she hasn't even, she, she doesn't talk at all, I, I think. And now uh, she's a person. So Condet says, I make her a person. And for me, it's very important because I need to, to make people see how women and especially, particularly black women are as a person, so. And who is this uh, woman? His Conceição Evaristo. Conceição Evaristo is this professor here in Brazil that creates this concept of escrevivência. And because of this, she's here because she will explain this concept for us. So, Conceição Evaristo was born in Belo Horizonte. I want to see uh, Rachel say, saying this <laughs> also, Belo Horizonte in 1946. She's, as you can see, a black woman. She's a peripheral black woman, a militant, a mother, a writer, and also an academic. As I said, now she's my professor also. So I'm so grateful for this. And then Conceição Evaristo, but I have to admit Linda, okay. She says to us that escrevivência demarcates how the forms of contemporary black writing are constituted. They express what the hegemonic literature repress in its representation. The expressions which element scenes in all ways of saying that the representation keeps in the fiction reality border. That's so. Um, Escrevivência starts with the literature, but it's important to say that it's more than this. 
Escrevivência, in its initial concept, conception, takes place as an act of writing by Black women, as an action that intends to blur, undo the image of the past in which the body voice of enslaved Black women had its emission power also under control of the slaveholders, men, women, and even child, uh, children. And if yesterday, not even the voice belonged to enslaved women, today the lyrics, the writing belongs to us too. They belong because we have appropriated these graphic things, developed of writing, value of writing, without forgetting the strength of the reality of our and our ancestors. Power of voice, of creation, of ingenuity that the manor house knew how to enslave for the delight of its children. And if the voice of our ancestors had directions and functions demarked by the manor house, our writing does not. Therefore, Conceição, not me, but Conceição says, our writing is not to make those in the big house fall asleep, but to make them up from their unjust sleep. So this, this is the main um, concept that I want to present to you here. I'm trying to say that Conceição Evaristo uh, concept of escrevivência. I'm trying to say that Maris Condé is doing escrevivência uh, by writing Aitituba. We can have access, we can access the narrative of Tituba herself, but it's possible to have this access through another Black woman which is Maris Condé. And then me and other Black women that are there outside the world are also legacy for this uh, narrative because it's important to us to know that this history and those histories and those narratives are now here with us. Okay, so it's important to say that this idea of escrevivência is collective, political, because it's bring, uh, it brings with an ancestral cosmology. It is thinking and understanding the world through the lens of crossroads of Africa. It's uh, to overthrow the coloniality of being and knowledge. It's also something beyond self-writing or autobiography because it reflects the collective, the political that first are unable to talk and now we can talk to them, we can write to them. You can also talk their lives. That's the main idea of uh, escrevivência. So in, oh, by writing, uh, I, Tituba, Black Witch of Salem, Conde rescued Tituba from a stereotyped narrative about the feminine and about the blackness and brought this figure of residency to life. She made her a person, so it's, it's very important. By writing herself in Tituba's narrative, because she was writing also uh, with some characteristics of her own life, nah? of her, uh, Maris Condé was doing this. Uh, she, Maris Condé, honors the existence of this and other ancestors and show us the powerful legacy of these existences. Thank you so much. I was very nervous, but I'm here to answer your questions. So can you uh, follow me at in Cruzilinhas, and also write to me in this mail address. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Yay. Congratulations. That was really fascinating.
Uh, and also, I have to compliment you. Those most beautiful PowerPoint. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. This is Claudia Fusco words. Work is not mine. So I have to thank you her every single time because she's amazing. That was that was wonderful. Yeah, it was great. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Please feel free to unmute yourself and just speak. Um, we do have some time. Yes, because you said to me 15 minutes, so I'm prepared just to talk to 15 minutes. <laughs> Do we have any? Lots of uh, positive comments in the chat. Amazing, wonderful, great. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like there aren't any questions, but lots of positive feedback. So we love to see that. <laughs> um, so we just want to say again, thank you so much for your time and for this presentation. Uh, you know, we here at the museum talk about Tichuba so often. And I think um, that was really interesting for you to talk about Conde writing in response to Arthur Miller. I, I didn't realize that that was a connection and that's such a wonderful observation that yeah, Arthur Miller is very much writing from a masculine perspective and Condé's yes. kind of is, an, um, uh, it's interesting to see it as a response to Arthur Miller. Um, so yeah, I, I certainly learned during this. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, we, we do talk about the crucible a lot because it's taught in school still. Yes. And, and maybe for some of the school students who come here, they wouldn't know anything about the Salem witch trials if not for the crucible. Yes. And yet it's fiction. And, but I never thought of that. And it is, the man is the center of the story. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, so that is fascinating. So we have to untangle all the time. This isn't actually true what he wrote. He was writing about McCarthyism, right? So uh, yes. It's interesting. And that's why I think it's so important this concept of escrevivencia because connects the narrative and also the uh, writer and right. make the see that it was a um, black woman talking about another black woman. Right. And it's very different from a white man talking about uh, our history. So now we're not. Yeah. Uh, describe it anymore. We talk, we describe our uh, narrative, For our sure. experience. So it's it's so powerful because I am talking about myself now. Mm -hmm. And then it's not a man that talking about me and say, right. oh, Tai Tuba, even Maris Condé is like this. No, Maris Condé is talking and I am Maria Carolina, I'm, I'm talking and Tai Tuba is also talking through Condé's narrative and also through Maria Carolina narratives and also uh, this uh, black women around the world. So I have Beautiful. a question before we wrap up. I'm wondering uh, how you became inspired Thanks. to start studying Tichuba. Um, you know, what was your first experience? I love the story of Mary Say Conde being in a library and a book falling off the shelf. So yes. <laughs> uh, so I'm wondering what your first exposure was to this uh, character in history. Was it the Crucible or was it uh, no. Mary Say Conde? No, yes, it was Crucible, but uh, I was just like this. Okay, it's a narrative. Uh, yeah. Mm. And and I, I saw that, oh, there, there is this Black woman, Taituba. Okay, but who is her I, I don't know but uh, when I created Encruzilinhas I started to read a lot of black women because I studied this and also because of the the narrative the Instagram profile so I always invited to talk about uh, black women writing and so I was okay let's see that and then this this uh, friend of mine who is called Clarissa Fusco, uh, Claudia Fusco, who did these beautiful images for me. Yeah. 
she said, okay, there is this book that's called Eu Tituba in Portuguese. I Tituba, I don't know. She, she, the, the writer is a black woman and I don't know, Maris Condé, she's alive. Maybe can be interesting for you, uh, for your research and also for your um, profile on Instagram. And I said, okay, let's see. And then I buy the book and I was, okay, let's see what is it. it this is the, I, I showed to you already. This is the Portuguese version. I love that cover book in Portuguese that it's beautiful. And then I, I started to reading and then I said, oh my God, but this is escrevivência. This is what I study, what I research, and what I believe that is the narrative of Black women. So I started doing this, and I was completely, oh my God, who is Maris Condé? I have to know more about her. And I started to read everything that she <laughs> was writing. And so um was like this. It was an indication of a friend of mine, actually, with two friends of mine that said, you will like this narrative because I think it's a book that talks about what you study. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I, I said, yes, it's perfect. It's a perfect example of a escrevivência and also of a, a narrative that involve, uh, that links, connect the writer's life and also the character lives. Amazing. Yeah. Jenny. Oh, I have a question. Yes, Thank yes. you. Thank Your words you. are so beautiful. If I had a time machine and I could bring Tituba here today and you could talk to her, what would you say to her? Thank you. Thank you for everything. Actually, when I was in Salem, <laughs> I talked to her because my first time in Salem was not uh, the day we met, it's the day before. And I was, oh my God, I am in Salem. And I'm here, I know because Tituba is with me. So I start to cry and I start to, to really feel the energy and feel her presence. And I feel her presence here almost every day. So I, I would say just thank you so much to, to be with me and to make possible to me to talk with this museums, uh, which, uh, which museum in Salem, it's, it's wow. And also to understand better my studies. So she, I think she, helps me to understand my studies, understand my condition of a black woman and in Brazil who has this terrible history on slavery. And then I, I think I would say just thank you so much and let's stay together for so many years because I, I have to thank you to use so much. I think this, Jenny. That was beautiful. Uh, and thank you, Jenny, for that question. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. We do have a question here in the chat from Cynthia. Okay, nice. that says, uh, if the crucible had been written by a black woman, what would be the biggest difference with the story as written with Miller? I think it would be completely different. <laughs> I think she will be focused on Tituba and not only, I think she will focus on the women, uh, all of the women, but especially on Tituba. So I think the um, I Tituba is almost a better crucible <laughs> because it's writing, it's, uh, it has been writing for, uh, for uh, black women. So I think if you want to know how it would be, read uh, IT Tuba that is a crucible, a better crucible, a better narrative because it's written by a black woman. 
and not because of this, but because has this, um, because I don't know if you know, but uh, Arthur Miller have to, had to change many of the passages of the crucible because they were wrong. So when it was published uh, at the first time, people are saying, but it's not true. It's not like this. So you have to change this. And then he changes something, uh, actually many passages uh, on the narrative. And for me, I don't know, but with the knowledge that Maris Condé has with the slavery and the history of the slavery in USA and also in um, England, in the, the history of the, the slavery, I think she is more, she gives us more accurate data, uh, data, more accurate historical data. So it's not because I, it's not only because I love her, she's a black woman, it's not only for uh, these questions, but I think it's also more accurate in terms of history because she's, um, she, she studies this until now. So for me, it seems that it's more real than uh, the, the narrative of uh, Arthur Miller. I don't know. I don't know, Cynthia, I, I answer your question. I think um, just in the context of this conversation, it's important to say that Arthur Miller is not the only person who uh, gets it wrong with Tichiba, right? We, this is a conversation, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a conversation so many of us in public history, in, uh, you know, in fiction and, uh, you know, historical writing are really having to unlearn now this entire narrative about Tichiba that has just, uh, that we now know is really flawed. The narrative that became very popular thanks yes, in large part to Arthur Miller, but this kind of version of her has dominated um, public history and the uh, you know public's perception of her for years. And when we met, that was something you and I talked about a lot. You know, we talked about yes. it in the context of our museum. We are, you know, always, you know, one of the big issues we have faced is our interpretation of Tichiba is very flawed and we are uh, in, on the road to dealing with that. But uh, so, you yeah, know, it's, it's based on 1970s, conventional wisdom, which was her yes. culpabil culpability yeah. in starting it all, which wasn't true. Yeah. It was because yes. of a 1949 book yeah. and, and Miller and everybody just ran with that idea. Yeah. And she had so very little to yeah. do with but, any blame, you know, so. Yes, but I think it's, it's also important to assume this and say, okay, I'm presenting her by this point of view, for example, for Maris Condé's point of view. Uh, once we don't have the real uh, tituba, the real narrative, the real history, so I want to present her like this, for example, and then, it, okay, so I will present her like this black woman that came from Barbados, and then it's for me works. Yeah. Right. Very and you do this in, in the museum. She's um, presented as a, as a black woman. She is, yeah. Yeah. With the, the part we're trying to untangle is very much the crucible the influence, yeah. uh, which uh, it's so amazing and interesting how influential that play was, you know, even to this day. And as we talked about, you know, because school kids are still reading The Crucible and often that's their only exposure to the Salem Witch Trials. Um, this is, I was actually, I was at the dentist the other day and my dentist told me, uh, she brought up Tichiba and said, it wasn't it that woman who was, uh, you know, teaching the girls magic. And as I'm sitting in the dentist chair, I'm like, well, yeah, no. I can't talk again. <laughs> oh uh, no, so, let's change this idea now. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's amazing how, uh, you know, that is an idea that has just lingered on. And, um, you know, as you said, if anybody who's here or watching this has not read this book, 
uh, please do. It's well worth a read. Um, you know, if we haven't sold you on it by now, then. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I, all, I also think that it's important that in Combe's narrative, it's not a problem to be portrayed as a witch. Right. Very much. So. It's not a problem to say, okay, I'm a witch. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not this devil witch that is uh, shown to us in. Arthur Miller and in, in so many texts and so many movies and plays. So, okay, if I, because Tituba uh, says that if what I do is witchcraft, so I talk to my mom that is dead because she sees the world in another logic, in an African logic. So it's different. It's not the, this chronological time. It's a time that is spiralar, mm -hmm. right? it's not chronological. So if I, I talk to my mom, I know the herbs, I know, I don't know, the I connect with the nature and uh, is this to be a witch? Mm -hmm. So I'm a witch, <laughs> okay, that's because I, I don't know which devil, which de what, what is it? So this is an, a creation of them. So I do, I do uh, many things with nature, with my mom, with my grandma, and okay, but devil, Christ, I don't know with this. So I think it's, it's also beautiful to see this, to see this new way of accepting and okay, I, so okay, I'm a witch and, it, and it's not a problem. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much for this presentation. This oh, has been you. so this has been so fun. And I mean the beginning of a long friendship, I'm sure. <laughs> um and thank you to everybody who came and for your wonderful questions. We will yes. make this available, uh the recording available hopefully tomorrow, shortly. Um and if you have not read this book, absolutely do give it a read. It's well worth it. So thank you so much. And we'll see you virtually again, hopefully in person again. Thank you, Carol. Thank, thank you. you so much. And sorry, but I was very, very nervous, but thank you so much. You did thank an amazing you. job. <laughs> okay. All right, good night, everybody. Happy Women's Day. <laughs> <laughs>